My name is Nikki. I'm an English makeup artist and I live with Carlo and our daughter Sky in Positano, Italy. Our house is far from the road but surrounded by fruit trees and olive groves and we grow our own food. We'll show you what it's really like to live on the Amalfi Coast. Subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Hello everywhere. Siamo qua a Roma, all'aeroporto. Siamo venuti a portare Sky. Così può tornare in Inghilterra e finire gli studi, finire la scuola. Uh, forse dopo facciamo un piccolo giro, non lo sappiamo bene. Oh, Holly, where is mamma? Dov'è mamma? Andiamo a vedere. Portami da mamma. Portami da mamma. Portami da mamma. Sky has been studying in England, but she's been trapped here since Christmas as all flights between Naples and London have been cancelled until the 28th of May and we finally got her on a flight from Rome. Just said goodbye to Sky. I'm not really supposed to be in the airport, but I begged them to let me in. Sub story that my daughter had never done it before and they let me in. So now I've got to find my way out because all of the doors seem to be closed. Siamo nel più grande parco di Roma. Ho dimenticato anche come si chiama, veramente. So we are just hanging around near the airport until we know the flight has taken off and Sky has gone. We've just found this park, as Carlos said, and it is beautiful. There's this lovely green area here. We stopped off at a little pizzeria along the way. We've got some food, so we're going to sit and have a picnic. Mm, a buona. <laughs> <laughs> It's a classic Roman focaccia with mortadella. That's all it is, mortadella in there, but it's very tasty. We've been driving along the seafront and we can't resist stopping to have a look at the beaches of Rome. Now Carla is going to take some and see if we can plant it and grow it at home. Facciamo crescere a casa? Eh, proviamo. Let me explain what we're doing now. When I was eight years old, we had a holiday in Rome. My mum was working on a show and my dad brought me and my brother out to Rome to spend some time with my mum. Mum got a few days off work and we decided to go to the beach. And we went to this beautiful hotel, which I remembered as the Hotel Ponderosa. 
and I tried to look up that hotel a few years ago and couldn't find anything like the Pond of Rosa. It was like it didn't exist. But uh, we've had another look and I talked to Dad earlier on and I asked him where he went, how did he get there? And he said it was south of Rome, which is perfect because that's the way we want to go back, to, back home. And I looked on the map until I found, because I remembered it was rocky, there was a beach like here, it was rocky. So I looked on the map and I followed the coastline up until I found a rocky part and I found the hotel. It's called the Hotel Punta Rossa, not the Ponderosa, the Punta Rossa. And that must have been my bad English accent at the time. Funny, Iniqua. So we're driving back via the coast road instead of the motorway and we're going to stop off and have a look at this hotel. It's closed, so we want to go in. But just sort of drive by, stop and have a look around for old time's sake. <laughs> This is it, and of course it's closed. I wonder if I can walk down here without getting into trouble. Looks like it's been closed for quite a while. Come fare un fantastico pane fatto in casa senza impasto e in poche semplici mosse? Vieni con me che ti faccio vedere come farlo. Sciogliamo i licoli o il lievito di birra nell'acqua. Poi versiamo la farina e impastiamo giusto il necessario che la farina si bagni. Lasciamo riposare per 3 ore e poi riprendiamo il nostro impasto. Versiamo il sale, facciamo delle pieghe in ciotola e impastiamo per 2 minuti. E questo per due volte a distanza di un'ora e mezza. Facciamo delle pieghe slap and down due volte a distanza di 45 minuti e poi fermiamo la nostra pagnotta. Una volta che abbiamo formato la nostra pagnotta la lasciamo in frigorifero per tutta la notte per almeno 12-15 ore. La versiamo direttamente sulla teglia, semola, facciamo un bel taglio e la mettiamo in forno per 50 minuti. Mamma mia che goduria, che croccantezza. I 
am meeting Carlo for lunch. I have made some pasta with tuna and lemon, and I've got some lemon, ginger, and honey tea, an apple and orange, some little Easter eggs, and we're gonna go have a picnic. And I think we're gonna go down to um, Laurito Beach because it should be nice and quiet there, and hopefully he won't get into trouble. <laughs> That's the most important part, the chocolate eggs. We always need chocolate after lunch. Ah, oh, forks could also be a very important part of the meal. Hello. Volevo far vedere questo muro qua giù. Oh, che bello. <laughs> <laughs> These are called Ladybanks roses and they're absolutely beautiful, but they only last for about two weeks and then they're gone. Holly, è curioso di sapere che cosa stiamo guardando. <laughs> no, non voglio giocare, volevo far vedere. Quindi so bene. Questo stiamo guardando qua. Vedi? Come curiosa. Non darmi le capate in bocca. If you've ever been here in the summer, you will know this area as Ristorante da Adolfo. It looks very different in the winter. And before you comment telling me that it is so sad to see it like this, please bear in mind that the season usually starts here in mid-May and finishes in mid-October. So it is completely normal to see it like this at this time of year. Mi piace guardarti mangiare. Volevo un croissant? Vieni con me che ti faccio vedere come fare il vero croissant francese a casa. Pulisci latte, lievito e farina. Lascia lievitare e unisci al resto degli ingredienti planetaria. Mi raccomando però è il sale va alla fine e il burro poco per volta. Rendiamo il nostro impasto elastico e forte.
ecco qua e poi lo mettiamo tutta la notte in congelatore la mattina dopo ci mettiamo il burro lo stendiamo 3 pieghe da 3 sempre girando l'impasto di 90 gradi e poi lo stendiamo a 2 mm facciamo i nostri triangoli senza essere troppo geometri mi raccomando arrotoliamo 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 ed ecco qui il nostro cornettino lievitiamo e poi in forno voilà il croissant francese and now it is time for another cooking demonstration there are too many cooking demonstrations in this video but last week Carlo made his caporalessa and he was testing it out to see if it was good enough. He has now declared it good enough to show you. So he is going to recreate that recipe today and let you know how he does it. These are the ingredients that you will need. Bucatini. Now these are like thick spaghetti with a hole that runs right through the middle. If you can't find these, just use normal spaghetti. That will be absolutely fine. Just don't tell any Italians. Um, you will also need some mozzarella, some canned tomatoes, some breadcrumbs, optional, you can mix breadcrumbs and parmesan, capers, olives, and an eggplant or an aubergine. I have cut this into cubes and I've soaked it in salted water for about 20 minutes just to get rid of some of the bitterness. And then I've just squeezed the water out and that is ready to go. So we will now let Carlo take over and show you how he makes his caporalessa. I will put the recipe in the description box below this video as I always do, and just to remind you that anything that does need to be linked in the video, uh, any shops that I visit or any B&Bs that I go and visit or anything, I will always link everything in the description box below each video. Signor Carlo. Sto diventando signore? Interessante. Allora, visto che hai preparato tutto, procediamo con fare la pasta? Sì. Ok. Add squash garlic. Garlic, put it on the counter, get a bottle, squash it, done. Ok, togliamo l'osso perché ovviamente nessuno vuole mangiare una pasta con l'osso dentro. È duro, potrebbe spezzarci i denti. Cazzo, no? Sì, sì, è quasi pronto. Possiamo poi farmi delle domande mentre faccio questo, così magari ti rispondo a qualche curiosità che ci hanno avuto le persone. Ok. Allora, ho messo i pomodori, ho messo le olive e i capperi. Adesso vado ad aggiungere le melanzane. Non sono bravo come lo chef Tommaso, però... Ok, questo deve cucinare per uh, 5 minuti, perché in effetti è già tutto cotto. Noi italiani piace mettere il sale nell'acqua, per la cottura della pasta. Diciamo un po' di sale così va bene per non lo so quanti litri sono. Io faccio occhio. Adesso andiamo a calare la pasta. Questa deve andare a metà cottura. Deve cuocere 10 minuti, noi la faremo cuocere per 7 minuti o anche 6 perché poi finirà, continuerà a cucinare nel forno. Right, the mozzarella has to be cubed and while I'm doing this, Carlo, there was a question the other day asking whether any of us have ever kayaked to the Galli Islands. Sì, effettivamente sono andato fino ai Galli in kayak, ma non mi ricordo che Niki era con me. No, I've never been, it's too far. Sono circa 4 miglia, poco meno di 4 miglia, diciamo 3 miglia e mezzo. Va? E fino a qualche anno fa, eh, per me nella pausa pranzo, eh, era facile andare ai Galli e tornare, diciamo in due ore. Così avevo una pausa pranzo di tre ore, in due ore riuscivo a scendere dal cimitero, andare giù in spiaggia, prendere il kayak, andare fino ai Galli, tornare portarmi anche il pranzo, mangiarlo e tornare al cimitero, quindi era un'ottima palestra. Mm. Cosa che ovviamente non sto facendo più da qualche anno, anche perché si vede, eh, perché ho messo la pancia e quindi... I have always wanted to attempt it and I know I can do it, 
but because it's four miles going straight out into sea and back again, I don't want to do it on my own. And I've never actually been around on the right day to do it. Because obviously you want to do something like that on a day when the sea's calm and flat and when the weather's not too hot. And hopefully this summer, maybe I'll manage it. Okay. Hasta copa. Adesso mischiamo un po' la pasta con la salsa. Dobbiamo. Vedete com'è dura ancora? Mm. È davvero dura. Ovviamente non è pronta per mangiare. Se qualcuno lo vuole sapere, sono 200 grammi di pasta. 100 persone. 100 persone. Non significa che uno le deve mangiare tutte. Anche se poi rimane, va bene anche di mangiarlo il giorno dopo. Allora, normalmente non ci vuole il parmigiano nella caporalessa, o almeno questo è quello che so io, e nemmeno il pane grattugiato, ma noi facciamo una ricetta personalizzata per noi, quindi ce lo metteremo perché a me piace. Beh, i cucchiaini andranno più che bene. Adesso 10 minuti nel forno e sarà pronto. Ciao ciao, ci vediamo fra 10 minuti. Dovrebbe essere pronto adesso. Guarda qui, subo. Uh, uh, uh. Dove vai? <ride> Okay. Eh, alla fine sono spaghetti, eh, non è che... Ok, let's try this. Se non è buono lo diciamo però, eh. Mm. It's good and the pasta is just perfectly al dente now. So it's obviously quite an important part of it to make sure that you don't cook the pasta full. Like fully cook it when you're in when you're in the saucepan. When it's in the saucepan. È vero. Non ci piace la pasta troppo cotta, troppo morbida. Mm. Buon appetito! Diciamo insieme. Io. No. Dai! No! Dillo! No! Sei! No! Lo dici quando è finito? No. Okay. Io vado allora. Ok. Un saluto e un abbraccio a tutti. See you next time. See you Ciao. next time. Bye. Oh, what is the Valenda Cotta? Oh, here you go, Daddy. Come here. 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 If you are still here, as this is quite a long video this week, I just wanted to pop in here at the very end and say thank you all for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, there's been quite a few requests for various different things and uh, a lot of them we can't fulfill at the moment just because we are on lockdown at the moment. I just wanted to remind everybody that we're still um, on a lockdown here. It should be easing a bit next week, but we can't really go many places. So I haven't been able to go out and buy any garden furniture to finish off the piece of garden under the lemon tree, for example. So there's nothing to show there. Um, we haven't been able to get started on our kitchen renovation. So there's absolutely nothing to talk about or show there because we really haven't been able to go to any of the kitchen shops or start ordering anything. Um, what else? Various things like that. Oh yes, people have asked us to go to Amalfi and do an update of the rebuild of the road after the landslide. We can't go to Amalfi, so that can't be done either. Hopefully next week the lockdown might ease a little bit and we might be starting to go out a bit further. So things might start easing up. We're hopeful because it's been pretty much on and off since November now. And it's very frustrating because everything's on hold. But you all know about that, so I'm not going to talk about that. And um, that's all I need to say. Sky's safely back in England. She's quarantining at my dad's house. My dad has had both of his vaccines, so he's fine. And she is fine. She's had her two day test. She'd be off to school in the next few days. And that's all I have to say. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next week.